Welcome to Stager Savvy, insider secrets to stage your home and sell it for more. My name is Stephanie. This is the podcast where we bring you the latest tips, tricks, and expert insights from the world of professional staging. And I'm joined by my friend and fellow staging expert, Candace. Hi, everyone. We may be competitors in the Denver market, but we believe in abundance and collaboration over competition. And we're here to share our collective knowledge with you. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from the experts. This is Stager Savvy. Good morning, everybody. This is Candace Doherty with Candace Lee Designs. And I'm here with my good friend, Stephanie Breckbill, and with SLB Designs, and we are Stager Savvy. In today's episode, we are excited to talk about 2024 and a fresh start. Hi, Stephanie. How are you today? Good morning, Candice. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited about this. Yeah, I think we're all feeling it. Right? New year. Like, it's it's time to, to do something new, I feel like. Yes, yes. So I think we're going to have a lot of discussion today about just um, how our houses can make us feel better in the new year. Yeah. And the things that we can do to make it feel better. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we we stage to help people sell and present their homes in the best light, but those same tips can also be for like now when you're right. you want a, when you want a fresh start in your home, you want it to feel refreshed and new. Right. So right. let's talk about all those things. Well, how was your, how was your holidays? Oh my gosh. It was good. We sort of had a late one because um, kids were sort of dispersed for Christmas day. Um, so we got them the following weekend, um, New Year's weekend, but not that night. It was like the 30th. To the 31st, we had a sleepover with everybody, and it was fun. Fun. So we had a big dinner and we opened our presents. and It was fun, late, fun. but it you know, it doesn't matter. It's kind it of was what you good. have to do when your kids get older and find boyfriends and spouses and all exactly. that stuff. Exactly. How was yeah. yours? It was wonderful, it was so busy. Um, yeah that I'm, I'm at this point still recovering and I'm not quite to the point where I'm motivated to get going with my business. Although I do have, you know, some proposals out there and, and a, a design client I'm working with. So my year is getting started, but I am not quite motivated yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I'm still sort of like, I'm excited that it's a new year, but I'm still yeah. like, Oh, I'm not quite ready to just dive in and right. I think because my plans aren't quite made, I haven't done the goal setting that's happening on the 18th. So oh. it's yeah, it's okay. You can have some time. Yeah. It doesn't then, have to happen like right after the new year, right? Right. Give well, and this is our slow season, so we might yeah. as well take advantage of the slow season and rest and relax and get kind of fired up for the busy season, which yeah. is right around the corner. I, yeah, because I think this year it's gonna it's gonna be a little nutty. Yes, in another I agree. month or so. Yes, I totally agree. I've had a lot of people reaching out and getting ready to list. So yeah, it's good already. Yeah, it's good. All right. So how about last year? A little reflection, I think, before we we dive in and and look ahead about refreshing. But how yeah. how did last year go for you? In general, I had a really great year. Yeah. I, I, in my business, I did well, at, and I've kind of figured out that I kind of like those small houses that really need the help. Yeah. Um, and so the big, but you know, I'll do whatever. Sure. <laughs> whatever comes my way. Right. Um, how about you? I think it was a good year. It, it felt a little bit slow. But then when I did my numbers at the end of last month, I was like, oh, all right. It's so maybe that means I've got my processes down a little better than I think I do. Right. <laughs> because it was just smoother, I guess. Yeah. So well, yeah. it was kind of a weird year last year, I have to say. It was. I went spurt it where it was busy and then it was not. And yeah, so that I think those those not busy periods made me feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing anything, but right. it, 
really all, you know, this design job here and this design job here, and then a few consults, over, you know, like it all yeah. worked out and ended up being better than 2022. Me too. I was like, okay, well, right on. Me too. Although <laughs> a weird year and felt slower, but at the end it was not. So that's yeah, for both of us. So nice. Right. See, we're so parallel. I love it. And what what are your goals for this year, do you think? I know you haven't done your goal setting and all that, but what do you think your focus is this year in your business? Um, in my business, community. Like getting myself out there, meeting more, like I'm I'm thinking more like hyper local. Like I love the online thing and I love um, you know, meeting people from all over and doing the virtual stuff. But like just meeting the local people and getting to know the neighborhoods and my community and all of that. My, I'm really being drawn to that right now. So right. it's that that's going to have a little more local networking, yeah. more local coffee dates, things yeah. like that. Nothing, nothing too big and crazy, but yeah, community is on my mind. How about you? Love it. Um, I don't really even know. I, I do still want to focus on consultations mm -hmm. and occupied homes, maybe try for more of those than the, the vacant homes. Although I love vacant homes for their own reason, right. I kind of need to zero in. So I don't know. Every yeah. year I go through this. Do I do this? Do I do this? And then I let God lead me. Right. I mean, <laughs> why not? Right, right. It's going to go yeah. where it's going to go, I think, whether you try to steer it that direction or not. I mean, I think you can help, but it's always just kind of what what lands is, is what's right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Good. So as we said, we were talking about um, our homes and how to um, stage to live mm -hmm. and what we should do in the beginning of the year to refresh our space and make it feel like a cozy um what am i trying to say a cozy place away from the mad world yeah yeah for sure like a nice relaxing rest place, a place where you want to spend time a refreshed space everybody's so into wellness at the beginning of the year and just making your home a place that feels good like that yeah for sure yeah. So, so, yeah, for me, that's decluttering. Like I went through it last year when I redid my office, we did a whole redesign. Like we took the floors out, we painted the wall, like everything. And in that process, I went through a lot of stuff and decluttered a lot of stuff and then brought only brought back in like what fits and what looks nice on the shelves and, and what feels good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love my wall back here. Right. I mean, it's, yes. Yeah, it's all what so I love spending time back here because it's, well, it's that's great. clean and it's decluttered and it's right. it just feels good. So now for me, it's taking the that rest of the house. Exactly, taking that <laughs> to the rest of the house. Like we've lived in our house for 27 or 28 years, like yeah. forever. We've and, been in ours 25. So yeah, I get it. you just accumulate stuff. And so ridiculous. I'm to the point where it's time to just get rid of it. You know, we, retirement's yeah. kind of in sight now. And yeah. are we going to move? Are we, I don't know, but like we don't need all this extra right stuff. So one That's of my goals this stuff. year is to do that. Go through all that stuff and oh, get it down to just what we need. But it, it's going to be a big project and it's going to be a year. So it's not like I'm going to declutter my house in 30 days or anything like that. Good way of looking at it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to break it down. I haven't quite done that and laid that out yet, but I'm going to break it down. And I don't know, maybe I should post my room. Right. Yeah. Maybe I'll post about it and like make it a, make it a whole thing. I don't know, but I'm, I'm yeah, I'm looking Pretty forward to it. content there. Right. <laughs> well, I've already kind of gotten started little parts of my house that were driving me crazy. And so just, I think it was yesterday, I went through my giant pantry, which was overflowing with half-eaten things of crackers and stale chips. And I mean, it was so full of crap. 
that yeah. <laughs> that was a good project. It did feel good. I, right? To be honest, though, I only did the bottom half. <laughs> but it still makes so. you feel good. Like a couple, maybe a month or two ago, I did two junk drawers in my kitchen. Oh, yeah. And just doing that was like, oh, look at my pretty drawer. It looks so great. I mean, nice. yeah. So even little things like that, I think are important. Like, and just to kind of reset everything, even if you don't need to do the big declutter, like new year, if you go around and you've got a few things that are out of place, like go around your house, put everything where it's supposed to go. Oh, and doesn't that feel good yeah. after Christmas? Right. Oh, you get everything that. put away and it just feels good. And then, you know, as you're putting things away, if that area is too full, maybe I'm going to take 20 minutes and declutter that space. So that it my kind laundry of gets, area, yeah, my laundry area could really use that. Yeah. So I'm and then gonna, it kind of gets worked into your daily life, and it doesn't become this whole big. Oh my gosh, I have to do. Right. I did my laundry. It's there's still too much stuff in there, but like we did like the main little section where all the laundry soap or what. Like I got a little tray yeah. to put it on, so it's not just all scattered everywhere. So that feels a lot better now when I'm doing right. laundry. Like it's organized. Right just on that little tray. So that feels good. And don't you think that when your house is cluttered, your mind is cluttered and by taking the time to put things where they belong and get rid of things that you're not using, that it helps declutter the mind at the same time? 100%. I did a, in fact, I did a workshop last year that was um, organize your space to organize your mind. Right. Like, cause we're all so I'm frazzled up here, but if you take care of the space, right, it'll take care of you. So yeah, right. it's for sure a thing. I did a lot of research on that. That was all yeah. before I was redoing my office. I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out. And so I dove in and I learned all these things and yeah, it's right. Well, if I could show you this pile of stuff sitting over here in my office that I have to go through, once I get done with all that, that'll feel good. And do you, um, do you shred papers or do you have a little, I just got this handy dandy thing for Christmas for everybody to I have um, one of those. Do you have one of these? I do. I, I'm I, so excited about it because then I can just, oh, I might've just broken it, but I hope not. <laughs> I might have right broken it, but I think what a great idea. Yeah, it's great. So this is if. How does it work? I if you're not watching, it's those little roller things that you can like roll over personal info yes. and it like, yes. it like um, covers it up with random letters and whatever. So you can't see through. So it, it like protects your identity a little bit. And okay, so you but, don't have oh, to. Oh, I got it. You have to twist and take the top off. There you but go. Anyway, this is called a, a guard your ID. That's exactly what mine is too. Yeah. I think everybody should have one of these. I gave one to all my kids and yeah. family members because, you know, we don't need all of our information out there for the world to see. And that's if right. you don't have a, a shredder, that's a, a great way to do it. Just ink out all the important stuff and throw it in the recycle bin. Right. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. That's a good thing. Cause I think a lot of people do have so much paper clutter and I mean, I know some stuff. It's overwhelming. Yeah. Some stuff you're supposed to keep for what, seven years or something. But like, do you really Does need your bank statements? Because they're online and you can just go download them. Or I don't, I don't hold all that stuff. Yeah. I so. don't. I try to recycle. And this is, it's, it's actually great that we're talking about this because this is a major issue for a lot of people. How much mail comes in and that it's, yes. they just can't make decisions on whether it's important to hold on to or to get rid of. And so we hold on to stuff that we don't necessarily right. need. And well, then you see that in, and in the state, in the homes we stage all the time, right? I all know, the I time. Yeah. All the time we run into this. Yeah. So, so do it for yourself. Even if you're not moving, take care of you, all, you don't need all that paper. I do need a better system, I think, for my mail. But I've gotten better to where I open my mail right away. If I have bills in there, I pay them right then. Nice. So that then I can get rid of that mail. Right. You now, because a lot of times it would sit and sit and then I'd forget about the bills. And then, you know, so it's a it's definitely a process for people, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good like the the one touch rule is good for for that, for like mail, for even 
email. Tell us stuff. about the one touch rule, Stephanie. Well, like when you ch check your mail, it's in your hand, you're touching it, go through it. And if it's trash, put it in the trash right then. If it's a bill, even if you don't hey. pay it right now, but put it <laughs> in the pile of bills to be paid so that when you sit down to pay your bills, it's there, it's where it's uh, supposed to be, right? So you're not accumulating a dining yeah. room table pile full of all it's the stuff. Overwhelming. Like if there's a magazine, are you really gonna read it or does it need to just go straight into the trash? Right. If you're gonna read it, put it somewhere where you will actually sit down and read it. Yeah. Like. They're tough decisions, though, that uh, people who have a hard time making decisions yeah. have a hard time with that. And it just it can it can take over your life before you know it. All that darn mail. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mail is we don't get very much anymore. We what? No, we get we, we've we've done do that. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure because I don't remember the actual process of doing it, but like unsubscribing. But from the mail, I don't know. But we get like Tuesday, we get our little flyers of the grocery cube, not oh, the grocery oh, weekly God. ads. And Wednesdays, we usually don't get anything. Then we get bills don't come in the mail. We get a couple bills in the mail, but oh. like we we don't get magazines. We don't get. I get like our local Parker whatever magazine, yeah. Yeah. but. Like we don't get a lot of junk. We get a flyer every once in a while, a little postcard, but yeah, not very much. I know. Cause I see my neighbor across the street. Sometimes I take her mail to her and she's always got a pile. She's just yeah. like, Oh my God, there's so much mail. So yeah, I know it. We're lucky. I don't know how, I don't really know how I got off all the lists, but I did. Yeah. That's what I want to get off the list. <laughs> so Google it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have any bad advice right now. Right. <laughs> Well, so next to our decluttering is deep cleaning. Oh my gosh. Right. Especially I mean, after the holidays and you've got all your, you finally got your tree down and all your holiday stuff down. Nothing feels better than a nice deep clean. Yes. Before you move on with the rest of the year. Yes. And I admittedly, I'm not good at deep cleaning. I rarely do it, <laughs> but like we did was it yesterday or maybe Tuesday? I cleaned the house. Like it was time. It would, you know, when the kids came, they brought the dog. And so we had a dog in the house and uh -huh. like just, we dropped crumbs and, you know, yeah. cause there were six of us here. And so, yeah, we vacuumed and dusted and all the things. And yeah. it's like, okay, the house is clean now, but yes. I, I need to find a person that will deep clean for me. Cause I'm not good at it. I, yeah, I went that way. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, kind of, my gal hadn't been here for the deep clean yet, but yeah. will be here shortly to deep nice. clean for me. But when you're a busy business owner, you deserve someone to help you with keeping your house clean. Well, and it's a matter of what's your time worth? Like That's you, right. you're going to probably make more money going and doing a staging than if you were to spend two hours right. cleaning your house. Right. So, I mean, it makes sense to just yeah. outsource that if that's right? if, like for me, like, I don't, I don't like cleaning, but I just do it because I have to. So me either. Whatever. Well, so do you have any specific but, products that you just couldn't live without as far as your cleaning goes? Oh my gosh. I do. I'm kind of a weirdo. I do the whole non-toxic thing and we do, yeah. I, um, just, I mean, God, I don't use a ton, a ton of products, really. I mean, toilet bowl stuff and bathroom spray stuff. And sometimes I dust with dusting stuff. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's just a dry rag. Yeah. Um, and there's so much dust all the time. I swear. Oh, my God. Well, we live on a dirt road. So, oh gosh. It, yeah, it's, and if you back up to open space, I'm sure it's probably the same, like, right. And then we have the alpacas next door Oh, who eat every morsel of anything alive. And so it's just five acres of dirt next okay. door. So when the wind blows from the South, that feels right. Nice. So right. That's cool. right. Well, one product I learned about that I will share because it's, it's a pretty important one for people who 
have like a glass shower door. Oh, you know yeah. How, you know how they just get caked on with with hard water and whatnot? If you're not really good about squeegeeing every time. This one I share with my clients all the time is to take, you know, glass stovetop cleaner. Yeah, I remember you talking about this before. Yeah. Yeah. Really makes a, a huge difference. I need to do that. My shower probably needs that. Yeah. Because I, we have a, so the non-toxic stuff, it's just a wellness store that I shop with and they have all the things. But one of the products is a spray on um, like daily shower. Daily spray, right, sure. Yeah. yeah. So we, we do that. And then I really don't hardly ever clean it. Neat That's neat terrible. Neat clean it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once in a while, I'll take the bathroom spray stuff and actually do it. But most of the time yeah. it's just the daily stuff. And That's great. It's, but you know, it does, it does still need the, the deep clean. Yeah. With the yeah. oven stove yeah. top cleaner stuff. Right. Right. You should do that. I always yeah. forget that. You've mentioned it a couple of times. So that's a good one. All right. That's a good one. But yeah, I mean, just, just having it clean and fresh and having your space feel good. It makes it yeah. a place that you enjoy. And it, especially if you're not using all the toxic stuff, like if your house smells like bleach, maybe some people like that. I don't know. But like if, <laughs> if your house smells like bleach, I don't think you're really relaxing and enjoying mm -hmm. the space. Maybe you are, but like the natural, like fresh fruit and, yeah. um, or sage or citrus. yeah, the citrus essential oils in a diffuser, like something light and nice mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when your home smells fresh and clean that way, as opposed yeah. to chemically bleachy. Yeah. Yucky. For me anyway, but that's all part of that, that creating that wellness space. Like it's clean, right. it feels good, it's relaxing right. and it smells good. Like we want to bring all those senses in, right? You're seeing that yeah. it's pretty and so it feels good. And so if you can smell that it's pretty yep. too, yep. that's always a good thing. I love my favorite thing stuff. to come home from being gone and have my cleaners here. And, you know, once they're gone and I come home, oh, it's my favorite. One of my favorite things. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know it's clean and I didn't do it. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> and yay. Now I can just go do whatever. Right. And, yeah. So besides, besides the decluttering and mm -hmm. then the cleaning, both mm -hmm. of those change your entire home. For sure. What else would you um, think about for the new year as far as your home goals? Gosh. I think once you get those things done and then you're, you're really starting to think about refreshing your space. I mean, the cleaning, I guess, really does the refreshing, right. but if you're wanting to change things up, make it different, whatever, maybe you're going to rearrange your furniture. Maybe Ooh, you're going to yeah. get new comforter and pillows mm -hmm. for your bed, or maybe you just need to bring in some greenery and add some yeah plants or flowers right. to your space. So it's like things like that, like All simple, those but simple, easy to do, but it's going to make a huge difference. Inexpensive. Yeah. I'm all about simple, inexpensive. Me too. So I yeah, I'm like comforter last January. And did you? It made such a difference in my bedroom. It just felt good and relaxing and cleaner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got new <laughs> furniture in our bedroom a couple of years ago because it's, we painted, it's a green up there and we painted it probably 20 years ago. Okay. So it was feeling dated, especially yeah. with our old dated furniture or whatever, but sure. we didn't, we didn't want to paint. So I, my goal was to refresh the space without painting. So like bringing that green back to life. Yeah. And so we did that with new furniture um, we had to have new furniture. It was like my parents' furniture from when I was a kid. Oh. It was, the drawers yeah. didn't work. It was time anyway. Yeah. Um, and we got the new furniture in there and I still hadn't done the bedding. And then finally, when I put the new comforter on and set the pillows up all pretty and I put the throw, yeah. it was like, ah, oh, it looked like a whole different space. We put yeah. new, art, new art on the walls, just little, oh. probably 11 by 18s or whatever. And 
it it did it worked like the green That's feels great. updated the whole thing just feels right. updated just from accessories some a couple of plants sure. new comforter it just feels good so yeah little things like we that know, we know a lot about that though well I mean, right i mean yeah for us we're we're seeing that every day in staging and exactly. the difference those things can make yeah bring it into your home and do it for yourself people yeah. or call us and we'll come do it well, but whatever you know even though you didn't want to do new paint, nothing changes the space more than new paint. And For fresh sure. Paint. And For sure. It's a pain in the butt to do it. But yeah. boy, does it always feel good Yes. once you're done. Yeah. It feels clean and fresh and new. So, so go for it. Paint. Yeah. Paint your bedroom. Paint whatever room and get a fresh start in that way. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Although be warned. Once you do that, then that'll lead to, you know, the next thing and then the next thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's where I, after we did the office, I was like, Ooh, we should paint the whole house. My husband's yeah. like, I don't want to paint. Right. I'm right. still, I'm still working on that. But A room at a time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Room at a time. So, um, what else? Let's see. Um, it's kind of all the stuff we talked about, adding fresh elements, just the a comforter, plants, new art, um, rotating your sofa just oh a different gosh. way or whatever. Maybe you're going to move your TV I somewhere else or just just something to make it feel fresh and new and different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I would recommend people kind of set a goal for their year as far as what kinds of things they want to accomplish in their home that year. It's maybe... They want to do a remodel of a bathroom or a, and plan that out in your, in your year as to when would be a good time to do that. I mean, if you don't have a major thing that you want to accomplish, just do like what you said and declutter and clean. Mm -hmm. And even those things will make a difference in your 2024. Yeah. But like you said, like still plan it. Like if you get it on your calendar or say, I'm going to work on, x in january right like, make a plan so that it actually gets done otherwise yeah. like where i am right now i'm thinking oh i'm going to declutter my whole house in 2024 <laughs> do well, a room i gotta have a plan put it otherwise on nothing's calendar. gonna happen yeah it has you have to it has to be sections that maybe one weekend is a closet and then the following right. weekend is the drawers uh, and then yeah you know and then the third weekend is you know, decluttering the whole bedroom space or whatever. And then maybe you take the fourth weekend off and right. enjoy your refreshed bedroom or whatever right. the case is. Right. But if you don't plan, it's not going to happen. Right. right. One thing so, I need to do is go through my closet and get rid of. Oh my God, me too. So, in, in fact, I said I, I was going to do it. That's happen. old. I don't wear. Do that, do that whole closet trick when you, um, at the beginning of the year, turn all your hangers around. Then once you wear something, you turn it normal way. And mm -hmm. so at the end of the year, you should be able to see very clearly what you're not wearing. Right. Which is and what you get rid of. And they do say, what years. do they say? Two, um, two years or is it a year? Two years that if you don't wear something, it should go. I think even a year is probably good. Like if I didn't wear it last winter, chances are I'm not going to wear it this winter. So unless it's something you really like. That you sure. think you wear. <laughs> I have a hard time getting rid of clothes. It is hard. It's a whole that takes yeah. us back to the whole, it's a whole mindset thing. Like it is. Because you think, well, what if I want to wear that? Right. And one thing I taught in that um organize your space to organize your mind workshop I did was it's like a 20 2020 rule. Like if you can replace yes. it for under $20 in less than 20 minutes, ah. it, go, it goes. You give it away. It gets donated. That's such a great idea. Right? Isn't that good? I was like, okay, that, I mean, and that can go, I think about that for like kitchens and like all of the extra kitchen accessories, utensils, all the random kitchen things that we have drawers right. full of. Like, right. why do I need three of these? If I eventually, if I need another one in a year. Right. And I can get it for less than 20 bucks. <laughs> like, why am I dealing with all of this clutter right now when it can be gone? And right. I can grab a new one when I need to. I mean, not that the world is disposable, but yeah, exactly. you're not going to need to go buy the new one. 
Yeah. Because you need one of these or whatever. So I like the 2020 rule. I'm not really super good at following it because I'm not good at decluttering. It's hard, but I'm going to embrace all that this year. So it is hard. So yeah. do you, do we have a step-by-step -step guide for our, our listeners? Pretty much. Um, no. We talked about it. Declutter. Yeah. Be clean. Yeah. And rethink your spaces, right? Yeah. I think that's good. I might okay. have something. I'll look and see what kind of, I might have a tip sheet on decluttering. If I do, I'm going to, because I mean, I know I have like a big guide thing that I sell on Etsy, but like we just need a little. And if I do, I'll put a link to it in the comments. Yeah. And I just posted about it myself to actually, when was that? That's right. It was hey, today. I think it's today. So. I think so. <laughs> Which is totally random, but. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I think those tips, we should copy and paste those tips from that post onto the comments of this too, because that was a good one. You yeah. had a ton of good info there. Okay, good. I'm going to put on here, I'm going to make a note to find a checklist. Okay. So that, or you can just listen and make yourself a checklist as we talk. Right. There you go. Um, well, I think so, we kind of, yeah, that it all. I think so. <laughs> Plus more. We, yeah. That was a kind of a deep dive into the yeah. whole, but that's okay. Like your house should be a place where you love spending time and you can do these simple things and make it feel so much better. Why wouldn't you? Definitely. Yeah. Good. Okay. So I think we're, I think we're good. This was, this was awesome. Thanks for being here. I always like to just, you know, basically chat with you and I know hope, it's good. Hope what comes out is something people can take away from. I think so. I think yeah. this will be helpful for a lot of people. So let us know if you did find this helpful, put something in the comments, tell us you're here, tell yes. us you listen, tell us you want a checklist, tell us you redesigned this space. Tell us, tell us what you're doing. Tell us what your projects are. What goals are you working on for this year for your home? How do you want your home to feel? Comment. Love let us know. to hear from you. Yes. So awesome. give us a, a comment, a like, a emoji, anything helps us uh, to understand that people are actually listening to our podcast. That's it. So, all right. Well, this was good. Us, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for being here, everybody. We'll talk to you all soon. We'll see you next time. And happy New Year. Oh, happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Stage Your Savvy, insider secrets to stage your home and sell it for more. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion on home staging and gained valuable insights that you can apply to your own real estate journey. If you have any questions or ideas for future episodes or would like to learn more about our services, please feel free to visit our website, stageyoursavvy.com, or reach us out to us directly at stageyoursavvy at gmail.com. We're always happy to help. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date on the latest episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us, and it helps us improve our content and reach more people. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.